Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to find the inverse hyperbolic cotangent. And how do we do that? Exactly the same technique. We're going to let y equals the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x. And because of that, we know that x therefore is equal to the hyperbolic cotangent of y, defined by the cosine or the hyperbolic cosine over the hyperbolic sine, which then can be put into terms of the exponentials like that. And then we can say that x therefore equals this. And now we're going to solve that for y, because essentially, once we find out what y is equal to in terms of this, then we can set that equal to the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of y. So that's the strategy. So let's see what we can do here is we can cross multiply, start with that. So we end up with uh, x e to the y minus x e to the minus y. We multiply this times this, and we set it equal to the numerator here, which is e to the y plus e to the minus y. And by now, if you've watched some of the other, uh, other videos, you know that the strategy here is to multiply the whole thing, left and right, by e to the y power, because when we multiply this times e to the minus y, this becomes equal to 1. So it simplifies the equation. So this essentially is multiplying both sides of the equation by the same thing. So here we end up with x e to the 2y minus x, that would be e to the minus y times e to the y, which is 1, equals, again, this is e to the 2y, and then here again, multiply these together, we get 1. Now what we want to do is isolate all the terms that have an e to, to the 2y, so we move this to the left side, x e to the 2y minus e to the 2y, and that equals moving everything else to the other side, x plus 1. Here we can factor out an e to the 2y, which leaves us with an x minus 1 equals x plus 1. Then we move that to this side, so we have e to the 2y equals x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And finally, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So when we do that, we take the natural log of the left side, e to the 2y is equal to the natural log of the right side, x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. The restriction here is that x is going to have to be larger or equal to 1, so we cannot have a negative, uh, we cannot have a 0 in the denominator, so x must be larger than 1, not equal to because that doesn't work. And then we come up here to finish it off, so we can say that 2y, because the natural log of e to the 2y is simply 2y, is equal to the natural log of x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And then divide both sides by 2, we get y is equal to 1 half the natural log of x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 with the restriction that x must be, uh, I need to leave a little bit more room here, so that x is greater than 1. So then we come back up here and we realize that y was equal to the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x, so therefore we can say that the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x is equal to one-half the natural log of x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And then we can claim also that this is equal to the inverse hyperbolic tangent of 1 over x. Well, to show you why that is the case, let's come over here and again. Here I have written down already what we the equivalent of the imper of the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent um, of x. So what we're going to do here is plug in 1 over x. So now we're going to solve for the inverse hyperbolic tangent of 1 over x, which therefore is equal to 1 over 2 times the natural log of. And what we're going to do here is replace every x by 1 over x. So this becomes 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 minus 1 over x. And then we're going to simplify that and then we're going to show you that this is indeed equal to the, oop, and that should be inverse hyperbolic cotangent. There we go, that's better. The inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x. All right, let's see if that is indeed the case. So this is 1 half times the natural log of, putting that over the same denominator, this becomes x plus 1 over x, divided by here, that would be x minus 1 divided by x. Of course, the x's cancel out, which leaves us with 1 half times the natural log of x plus 1 over x minus 1. And then coming up here, 
we see that this is indeed exactly the same. So this is the natural log of x plus 1 over x minus 1. And uh, here the natural log of x plus 1 over x minus 1. So you can see that's exactly the same. So this is equal to, therefore, the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x. So we can see that this here is indeed equal to this. And so sometimes we express the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x in terms of the inverse the inverse hyperbolic tangent of 1 over x. Boy, that's quite a tongue, a tongue twister, isn't it? And so we can either write it like this, or we can write it like this. Both is the same thing as the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x. And that's how we do that.